Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. I'm going to talk to you a few minutes about the paper published in the December issue of Gastroenterology entitled Efficacy of Ursodesoxycholic Acid in Treating Intrahepatic Cholestasis of Pregnancy and Meta-Analysis. My name is Vincent Di Martino. I'm a French hepatologist, and this paper was uh, written by Yannick Bach, another French hepatologist, uh, mainly involved in um, pregnancy-related liver diseases, and also numerous investigators from the Europe and the US. Intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy is a common condition which prevalence varies from 0.5% to 28% in some ethnic groups and is characterized by very unpleasant symptoms for the mothers very uncomfortable, but also with very poor outcome for the baby because it was reported to be associated with intrauterine fetal death, fetal distress, spontaneous prematurity. So it is very important to protect the baby and the temptation is to shorten the pregnancy to induce the delivery because this condition is reversible after delivery. But by doing that, by inducing prematurity, we can also uh, induce some morbidity for the baby. So there's a room for medical therapy that may make the mother's condition more comfortable, that may protect the baby both by allowing the pregnancy to do uh, to be achieved until its term and to protect the baby against uh, poor uh, outcome events. During the last decade, urso desoxycholic acid was tested in some trials comparing this treatment to either all the medical therapies or placebo or no treatment. And the literature provided finally a low level of evidence for ursodesoxycholic acid because the trials were very scarce, included a very small number small number of patients, and also because the outcomes were not uh, reproducible between trials. But we all understand that because this condition is very un uncomfortable for the mother, it is really difficult to carry on large randomized control trials against placebo versus placebo, for instance, because it's very the, the majority of obstetrical teams are reluctant to let the mother under placebo when uh, they suffer uh, from pruritus, for instance. So it's very difficult to, pro to, make, to carry a very large randomized trial. So we thought it was a great opportunity to conduct a meta-analysis and to analyze the available literature on this topic. Okay. Our meta-analysis was conducted in a very conventional way. We selected nine randomized control trials, numbering more than 400 mothers with intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancies. Um, those mothers received either ursodesoxycholic acid, in the uh, 207 cases or other therapies in 177 cases or placebo in 70 cases. The outcome measures were very heterogeneous so we could not use 
the material published without any uh, modification. We thus called the investigators of the previously published trials to give us additional information and for that we used a standardized questionnaire. We send the questionnaire to the investigators and for eight of the nine selected trials the investigator answered to us and thus co-signed the paper. We decided to perform for each outcome measure two meta-analyses. One for ursodesoxycholic acid as compared with other treatments and the second restricted to the trials comparing ursodesoxycholic acid versus placebo. And we considered 12 outcome measures. Five were related to the mother. It included pruritus resolution, total resolution of pruritus, that was the more objective outcome measure regarding pruritus. Another outcome measure was the improvement of pruritus, that was very subjective, but was reported in, in some trials. The second outcome measure was the serum LT normalization, or the serum LT decrease, uh, a more than 50% decrease in serum LT level, more precisely. And the last one was a more than 50% decrease in serum total bioacid level. For the baby, we considered seven outcome measures. The first one was the intrauterine fell death. And we can say at this point of the, of the talk that in none of the published trial were reported some cases of intrauterine fell death. So it was not possible to perform statistical analysis on this endpoint. We considered for the baby the total prematurity and for that point we we must we had to take into account the proportion of multiple pregnancies in each arms. We also considered the spontaneous prematurity to better discriminate between spontaneous and induced prematurity. We also considered the fertile distress, the respiratory distress syndrome, a very important endpoint that was the APGAR score below 7 at 5 minutes, and as a surrogate, the last endpoint considered was the hospitalization in neonatal intensive care unit. So let's have a look on the results. First, for the parameters, we observed that uh, mothers who received uh, ursodesoxycholic acid uh, experienced a total resolution of parameters in about 42% of cases, very more frequent than mothers who received other therapies, 6%, or mothers who received placebo, 8.6%. However, because of the small numbers of mothers included in trials comparing UDCA versus placebo, the difference was not significant, probably because of a type 2 error. For serum LT level, Again, UDC was associated with more frequent uh, normalization in serum LT levels that was obtained in more than 27% of cases versus 9% and 14% in mothers who received other treatment or placebo respectively. And for the serum total bile acid, that is as you know, a variable associated with the fetal outcome, 
a more than 50% reduction was observed in 54% of mothers who received UDCA versus 24% of mothers who received other therapies and 18% of mothers who received placebo. In that, uh, for that outcome measure, for this outcome measure, and also for the cell mortality level, the difference regarding UDCA versus placebo was still significant. Okay, for the baby, the total prematurity was more frequent in the patients who received other therapies or placebo versus UDCA, but it's probably more interesting to look at spontaneous prematurity. It was only 8.7% in the mothers who received UDCA, 19% in the mothers who received other treatments, and 18% in the mother who received placebo. No significant difference for UDCA versus placebo, also because of a type 2 error, but a very uh, significant uh, difference. Finally, when looking at the total prematurity in mothers receiving UDCA versus other control treatments. For the fetal distress, again, a protective effect of UDCA was observed, but not when looking specifically on the trials comparing UDCA and placebo. The same thing was note, noticed for the respiratory distress syndrome. For the APGAR score below 7 at 5 minutes and for the hospitalization in neonatal intensive care unit. So finally to conclude, to give an overview of the results, we can say that UDCA was associated with better prognosis for the baby and that was an original finding finally, very reproducible between trials. And highly significant in the meta-analysis. However, some pure methodologic minds may argue that the difference was often not significant when comparing UDCA versus placebo, so the evidence is not 100% achieved, probably they're right, but as I stated before, it may be difficult to have more uh, evidence on this topic. So to conclude, we think that our paper may be useful for helping obstetrician to trust on UDCA, to give the mothers, to give to the mother this treatment, and to allow the pregnancy. To uh, go on until it's term. Thank you very much for your attention.